unfortunately our scavengers keep eluding us every time we go off air they appear and then they just disappear as soon as we come back again so we've seen as far as i've seen now i've seen three or four there they are actually running around since you can see one that's busy bouncing and running through the bush there so it seems as though they've got apparently they've got bits of the carcass of this buffalo and they're busy tussling with each other trying to pull pieces and get pieces of their own so there's quite a number of them that are actually in the area and the guys told me that there's eight in total so they're mostly down near the water's edge playing around with the buffalo horns where that one is walking now you can see there comes another one from the right hand side so it is a long way away and i don't think they're going to come closer towards us because they're preoccupied with this food that is around so they're chewing on bones and bits of this carcass and that means that at the end of the day they've got other things to worry about i don't think they're going to move off anytime soon it's not exactly going to get hot it any stage today it's still overcast it's still cloudy which means that they can spend quite a long time still fairly active in that area there was a lot that actually came from the right hand side that came down that hill from the thicket on the on the top right corner and then moved towards the dam so there was three of them that came from that side so I don't know if their numbers are growing or if those ones were around to begin with as well so they seem to have all gone down into that little gully that leads into sydney's dam that we just can't see from where we are so it's a little bit of a tough one and as i was saying with the amount of food that's probably here i don't know if these guys are going to come towards us so what we might do is just carry on and if we hear that they're starting to come then begin to move back into that area or, and try and see if we can find them the problem that we have is that like i say the signal's so bad that repositioning there we go sensor the two of them are actually out sorry sensor so sensor is battling to find them but there's two that are walking around there there we go three actually that i can see now four so there comes the fourth one from the left hand side come on guys come back to us It would be really interesting to know who is who here. I don't suppose any of you would be able to actually identify them from this distance, but if you can, hashtag Safari Live. be interesting to know which individuals we actually have at this particular carcass, whether it's members from the EP clan, whether it's the members from the Juma clan, or if it's a grouping from Manyaleti. I would suspect that this is all the Juma clan that is hanging around here, but like I say, from the distance that we're at, to ID any of them is near impossible. And there you go, typical hyena bounce. William, you're wondering if hyenas are scavengers or predators? Um, both, William. So you'll find in this area our hyenas will hunt for themselves from time to time, but they will also scavenge. So you'll, f especially in, in a place where there's a predator rich density of lion and leopard and, and wild dogs, that means that hyenas can afford to be fairly good scavengers and they'll go around and they'll scavenge quite a bit but you'll also find when they grow a little bit larger and the clans get bigger it's not as easy to scavenge food all the time for everybody and so that's when they'll start to hunt successfully for themselves and the clan that lies to our west they often are hunting buffalo and giraffe i've seen them bring down and varying other species of antelope because the clan is so big that it's, it's close to 50 hyenas they they can't afford to go around stealing half an impala here half an impala there because they just won't feed everybody so they do kill for themselves quite regularly are you going to come towards us it's hopeful it looks like it's moving in our direction this individual now this must be a low ranking individual or a male because it seems to be on the fringes of what's going on and it keeps getting kind of pushed away by the others so i would imagine that it's not one of the higher ranking members the higher ranking members will be the first ones to feed and they'll keep the males and young ones away as much as possible but unfortunately that's it we can't really see too many more of them it was just a brief glimpse into our hyenas world and like I was saying just now, I can't really move from here, so I'm going to try and just stay here for as long as possible and, and see if they m come, because if I decide to start the car and move off, well, we're going to lose picture with all of you. So I'm just going to sit and hope for the best. There comes another one now, Senzo. You see it on the right there of that bush. There's quite a few of them that are coming out. Bless you, Senzo. So there you go, you can see quite a few of them starting to come out now. One, two, three that I can see there. And 
you can see typical head down feeding. Bless you, sensor. So I believe that one of these clan members is the, one of the males called Tala, which I've actually never seen before. So that'll be a first time for me to see that individual. Oh, with a K. So Carla, is that right, Megan? Something along those lines. So that's from Chris Rogue, who knows the hyenas probably better than most out here. So thank you, Chris Rogue. I, like I say, I'm still trying to find half of these Juma clan members. There's a lot that we just never see, and they obviously spend a lot more time in other parts of the reserve. So you'll find they're spending time in Manuleti, Bufelzuk, or down in the south. So it's the first time for me that I've seen Carla, who's... Well, I would imagine one of those young, well, the one that was walking on the left, maybe the first one that we saw, it, like I would say, looked very male-like. So Chris says another one is Gwen Sun Sol. So we got quite a few males lurking around, and that's probably why we're seeing more of them than the others, is because they're on the fringes, on the outskirts, being pushed by the females away from the food. You'll find the males have to wait for a little bit and kind of compete with the females as much as possible to try and get food. But they will be on the outlying areas, and then the females will be down where the main part of the carcass is. So that's probably why we're seeing all the boys on the edge, and we'll find that the rest will start coming. As soon as whatever is there is finished, then you'll find the females starting to come out and maybe get a view of them. But still cool to see. It's, um, it's nice when we get so many of our hyenas together, and to see a new hyena in this area is always special. I might have seen him before, but with the fact that we see them so briefly, it's sometimes a bit difficult to actually identify them now, i don't know what that one's got whatever it's got it's quite large you can see it's actually not bending its neck too far so maybe it's got a bit of the skull or some of the ribs that it's dragged there or even a leg but it's got some length to it you can see how it's kind of got its head down feeding in the grass but it's not pushing its head all the way to the ground for a small bone so it's got something substantial bone wise there and going to town now the hyenas have incredible bite force and so even the ribs of a buffalo or the smaller bones they'll be able to crunch those down and be able to get them it's got the horns you can actually see the horns sticking out in places there that's very cool it's a pity about the green bush Lisa, you're wondering why hyena's backside is so much lower than their front. Oh, why are you running away, hyena? That's maybe one of the younger ones being pushed off again. Um, Lisa, the reason why is that for these guys, when they're hunting or when they're moving, they're covering massive distances. So they're not like lions and leopards that have a short burst of speed and then they walk everywhere else and, and then don't cover massive distances. So these guys have this sloping back because when they run, they'll actually rock. And that rocking motion is far more energy efficient than a straight-backed animal. And it means that these guys can cover much longer distances without exerting as much energy. And you'll find things like Topi in, in the Mara, they have that, Vildebeest have it so all these animals that move big distances tend to have this more sloping back pattern that allows them to then be able to run for longer periods and, they, and their hunting style means that they chase animals to exhaustion and that's why they have this more sloped back that you see right I think our hyenas all disappearing again and there's some other vehicles that 